Good morning and happy Friday. Hey, Pepper's with me. Let me yep. turn on all the little like widgets. We have like all these widgets we got to do. Oh, pepper. It's the pepper widget. There's my pepper widget. Okay. I have widgets and I'm not afraid to use them. <laughs> That's what Pepperbot says, but I don't see the widgets. Oh, man. Okay. So. The quote for today's show is, the great artist is the simplifier. And that's Vincent Van Gogh. Van Gogh. Hmm. (laughs) I agree with it. Yeah, right? Right? Hmm. You never know. I mean, I don't need to lose an ear over it, but... Well, you know. It's one of those things. He just had a very bad ear. Mm, True. Must have been 2020 for him, too. Mm. Yeah. 1920 was not the greatest of years. No. 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 Okay. I'm going to switch over there. We're going to do warm-ups real quick. And then Pepper's going to make paint today, and we're going to watch him make paint. Yes. We'll watch him watch the paint dry, too, or something. I don't know. Let's not do that. That, That's that's really boring. That's That's really boring. boring. Making paint is cool. Watching it dry, not so much. Okay, I'm going to switch over there and see if this works. Hey, it worked, and I'm still here, in theory. Yes, okay. technically you are. <laughs> Did you switch your mic, too? Or? No, 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 no. I should have just kept my mic the same way. It should okay. still be on my... I just move... I, my, my mic's on an arm, so it, it swings. Gotcha. Okay, hmm. back to... What we were doing here, I've got my trusty L square. We'll just do this. Has actually been interesting, Pepper. My lines have become much, much straighter. This is actually a really good exercise, I'm noticing. So, you're doing the same exercise, but with a ruler, right? Well, no, I'm doing the same. Well, yes, I'm doing the same exercise every day. I just draw the lines with the ruler just so that, like, so that I've got a target to work on and the target straight. I'll show you in a sec. Mm-hmm. Right. So. Yeah. That was, I think my problem last week when I was like trying to follow along, um, was, was, was getting the points correctly. And I didn't feel like I was actually getting them correct. Right. So, so I, I just draw the initial lines like this with the ruler and then I let the L square go sit over here. And then I bring out my French curve. And I just trace around the French curve because it's this is good practice too. I'm horrible at holding lines straight. <laughs> and so uh, all I'm doing here is just giving myself some curves to work on. Then I put the French curve over here. I put this back here just like this. We take just a, a number or a zero point four fine liner here. A zero point four? Yeah. Is that uh, mangaka or sac- like what brand is that? Uh, Uni pin. I actually oh, intentionally yeah. use the cheapest pins that I've got because yeah. I really don't want to mess with this. So then, keeping my elbow off the table, I just trace the line. One, two, three, four. And I can see it, like I've got some waves here where I like start and I end. And I'm just trying to kind of level those out. One, two, three. Four. And then these guys are point to point. So like leave it. Oh, I missed it entirely. There we go. Right. Don't take this the wrong way. It sound it looks like when you did that, it looks like when you first made the mistake the first one, you subconsciously curved the next one almost the same way to kind of show like a progression. Yeah. Well, and I noticed that – why would I take that the wrong way? I noticed that um, 
I don't but, know how people are going to take what I say. Right? <laughs> I'm like, why would I take that the wrong way? What I've noticed is like the first one on like, especially this line right here, the first one's like, wow, yeah. all over the place. And then like the second one's nicer. The third one gets really nice. And then that fourth one is like really right on the line. Yeah. And so these, these point to points are great because otherwise you're training your eye to follow the line and that's good. But you also want to train your eye to look ahead, which is what the point to point's about. And then you have to train to go very, very long. Like out here on this long line. With, with bacon. With bacon. Mm -hmm. Although bacon starts out straight and narrow and then curls up when you cook it. Yeah, we really don't want bacon here. And I just do four of these. Not even Kevin Bacon. Well... You know, that's a thing. So, I mean, that, what's your favorite really is curves, and I'm bad at it. What? I'm sorry. What? So you you're doing the curves now? Yeah, and I only do one of each, but I'm not very good at the curves. That's the part that I still need to work on. I don't stay on line with the curves. And For then, me, it has to be how I'm, what angle I'm coming at the curves. I don't, I don't know if that uh, will help you later on. Like maybe turning the paper a bit, and then like trying the curves from a different angle. Right. And also, uh, the other thing with curves for like longer curves, if you hold the pen or the pencil differently. And you just move it with your arm and not like focus on your hand so much. For me, like it can be like one swooping motion where I my hand doesn't have the control, like my elbow or my shoulder may. Well, that's that's the whole point is to I, I say lock your elbow, but not really. But the idea is to kind of just make it so that you're doing this motion instead of this motion, you know. Mm -hmm. And I'm really working on kind of freezing my wrist, freezing my elbow a little bit, and just pulling from the, the so shoulder. We're working with the shoulder. Yeah. So, that's, I mean, that's yeah. One of, uh, that's one of the things that... So this all comes from a website called drawbox.com, where mm -hmm. this guy was talking about us not having... Even us 25 years in artists are missing some core concept pieces that we can't do. Mm -hmm. I'm having a problem with dynamics, as far as like my art, I don't feel like my art's very dynamic. I don't feel like the pose is dynamic. I feel like they're all doing this, you know? And so they don't get dynamic. They don't really push. And it doesn't matter what I seem to do. It doesn't seem to push like I really want it to. So I've been going back to the basics in hopes that maybe I missed a step somewhere. Maybe there was some core step that I missed. And I found doing that, I found out that I wasn't doing action lines at all. And so I learned about action lines and that helped, that pushed a little. But I'm still looking at like, I'm looking at kids who are 20 years younger than me, who yeah. are doing pictures that are just far, far more advanced looking. And I'm thinking, I've got, I've got my 10,000 hours in by now. So... I missed something because it's not a matter of putting in the hours. Now it's a, I missed a skill. I missed a step. Mm -hmm. so, so I'm hoping that if I go back over all these steps again, all the basic steps that we all learned in you know college back in 1992, um, which is when I was in college. I know, I know I'm old. So, um, cause you're like, I was born that year. I know I can hear it in your head. Me? No, I wasn't born in 1992. No, I'm just everybody. Every time I say I was in college in 1992, somebody pipes up and goes, "Oh, that was the year I was born." Oh, well. Anyway, anyway, um, but my um, the the thought process here is that <laughs> yes, we're so that's what I'm doing. TLDR, I'm going. I'm trying to get back to my roots. 
And I figure if people want to join me on that journey, they can. Cool. It's good for everybody. It can't hurt to, to learn how to draw a straight line without putting your elbow down on the table. No. Um, and, and what I was trying to say was what, um, coming at it from a different angle for at least curves, not the straight lines, but the curves may help if you're not as strong mentally, like under, like if you feel like you can't do something, come at it with, from a different angle. Sure. Sure. Well, that's why I like this particular exercise. It's not, there's no significance to it. It's not important. Sure. If I screw up the curves on this piece of paper, it's a piece of copy paper with a line drawn on it by a pencil with my French curve. You know what I mean? It's not like this is the, the piece that's about to go to a client where I'm trying right. to practice this. So if I screw it up a hundred times, it's really not going to matter. Um, yeah. So I, I really want to get to the point where I have seen this, like my dad used to do this with drafting because mm -hmm. he was a drafter. Um, and I, he would just, and I was like, how do you do that? You know, your lines are perfect. And you didn't, you didn't use a ruler or a straight edge. You just had the pencil down beforehand. And it's just because he was a draftsman. That's, they were so used to, you know, just putting in these perfect lines that, and so yeah. that's sort of where I'm headed with this is where I think I'm going. Yeah. My, um, my, my dad is a structural engineer. So when he had to draft plans, um, same he would thing. do the same thing. Um, the thing is, is eventually both him and my grandfather, their lines started wiggling over time due to age. Sure. And so they now just basically do the same things, but with rulers. Sure. So they have to re like, um, I don't know exactly what it is, but like for certain people, if you drew, if you did draw a perfectly straight line when you were younger and you can't as you get older, it doesn't have to do with like losing muscle memory. For some people, it's just your hand steadiness sure. hasn't. And I still have a very contact. steady hand at this moment, right at the moment. Mm -hmm. But I am pushing fifty, and I know that over the next couple of decades, I'm going to start losing that you know the, the the structural ability in my arm well you're so, you're training your muscles so that should actually calm it um my dad and grandfather did not right and that's that's the other thought process was let's hold it off as long as we can because i know i know i'll be making stories until literally the morning i'm dead you know so I, mean, I, I might as well keep the the parts of my body that need to do that like keep drawing and keep drawing and keep this stabilized, you know? Well, I hope that, um, you know, in any case you become like, uh, another Peo where, um, the original Peo died and the son and daughter took over. And that's kind of cool. Yeah. So and they, they still make Smurf stuff. They do. Mm -hmm. I don't know. If, uh, I don't know if that's the thing, but we'll figure it out. <laughs> Okay, Alrighty. so you are here today to show us how to make paint. Yes, yes I am, and I I'm am... wishing you to make a specific shade of Asian skin, because I can't seem to find that for anything, and my main character is Chinese, so she needs a, a, a shade of Asian. All the skin tones out there are pink. They're too pink. <laughs> she doesn't have so... pink skin. <laughs> So we're going to go over to my art desk. Um, again, it's going to be upside down for you guys. It will be right side up for me. So um, we will go from there and I'll explain all the tools and everything. And guy, I'm not going to be in front of the computer. So if anyone fields questions or anything like that, go I'm ahead there. and uh, ask them. I'll try to speak in a normal tone because I, before the show, I tested this out. And I was screaming, and it seemed like I was coming very loud towards you, <laughs> most likely. <laughs> it could happen. So, all right, let's go ahead and switch that over for you. There we go. 
Don't mind the art book. It's going to go away. <clears throat> I've gone ahead and maximized the screen. So you have full control. All righty. Um, so let me start off. And I did like the biggest mistake ever. I forgot to have fresh water. Uh oh, fresh water. For those of you who are wondering, fresh water is critical to everything we do in watercolors, hence the name. So, there we go. What was that guy? Oh, I'm making snarky comments about water. <laughs> uh. <clears throat> All right, so I got some fresh water right there. Um, I'm going to talk about some tools first. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, you're great. You're solid, man. All righty. So a lot of questions. Um, some of these are self-explanatory palette knives. Um, you want a paintbrush, so I'm going to use this one. Um, this is what I'm going to be putting the paint in. I already have that ready to go because, like, sometimes I just don't remember to do it. And I was like, oh, I want to make this as easy as possible. Makes sense. Uh, so this is just a glass board. Um, as you can see, it's been dulled because of use. <laughs> um, there so you can't a use it for a window anymore. Yeah, you can't use it for a window anymore. Um, some people will actually etch this prior to using it. Um, but the process of using it will actually naturally etch it. This is my glass molar. Um, as you can see. It has an etched underlining right here. So that uh, basically when I press down, it the, the particles of the powder will get between this and the glass. And then basically what happens is it, it gets basically dispersed into the binder. Mm. Measuring spoons, because uh, whatever I want to do for you guys, I have to recreate later down if you run out. Yep. So one of the things is uh, we're going to make this my main character's skin tone and in doing so we want to make sure we can recreate it because i probably will be watercoloring the entire comic book set once i get my watercolor skills up to speed um and so since that's the case we need to be able to recreate the skin tone main character and all okay now, the other thing I want to mention is all my colors that I have on the board are non-toxic. However, I still have to use one of these. Um, so you may get me muffled a little bit uh, later down the road. Uh, <laughs> only slightly. It's not too, too bad. But basically what this is going to do is um, it's going to stop if I get any particle flare up from the from the pigments right here right this will stop it from going into my lungs that's, that's about perfect. it um even though they're not toxic, that. you shouldn't breathe this stuff in right hey, and, even if it isn't toxic you don't want your lungs to be blue there is that, that is true that is, that is true um and then obviously rubber gloves because you don't want this all over your skin and staining it <laughs> And yes, this is Fresh Binder. Well. I made it last night specifically for this show. Yay, Binder. Now, the, the major difference between my regular Binder and this Binder is this is Vegan Binder. Ah. Uh, so it only binds vegans together. <laughs> no, I didn't. Um, this is made with corn syrup instead of honey. So that, that's the major difference. I'm not vegan, so it doesn't. I mean, that's that's okay. I'm either I'm good either way. 
I'm just making sure that I let people know that the base is not going to be a honey base. It's going to be a corn syrup base, which is a little bit different than if I was using honey. They react differently. Mm -hmm. um, but Guy, you're the first person that I've actually made this for. Yay. So I've never used it on normal stuff. So just be happy that I'm doing this as samples at first. <laughs> <laughs> what's Luna wants to know what's the binder made of? How is it made? So the binder is actually made of a combination of gum Arabic. Okay. Now this is a uh, food grade gum Arabic that I use. Um, main reason why I use a food grade gum arabic is i know it's not going to be toxic just in case um if i just if i gave this paint to say like some if I, if i someone purchased a paint from me and they have a child and they decide to stick their finger into the, my paint um i don't want the binder to be kind of like not food grade uh so would that part wouldn't be safe the only unsafe part that I think that they would have problems with would be the pigment powder that's, that's, fair. that's going in. So I try to make it as less as toxic as I can. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Distilled water is what you do. So it's a two to one ratio normally. Um, you can play around with that as an artist. Um, I didn't want to do my solution creation in front of you guys because that is more of a proprietary thing because i do sell um oh, some of my paint <laughs> so, yeah we got, no, we got no problem with that yeah um and then uh just good old corn syrup you know like mm. go into your baking area of your thing and use corn syrup for what it's good for paint um right. and so, not yeah. for your soda yeah, yeah yeah um so for for the pigment so this is titanium white right um then i have ultramarine blue i have what is known as bright yellow but this is py 74 uh brilliant yellow that's what they're calling it um i have gold mica powder just in case guy wants me to be fancy oh i love fancy i'm not thinking <laughs> raw sienna and this is mayan red genuine um that's what i was told uh but their new mayan red is much brighter so i believe that the genuine mayan red has a bit of a hue of a blue so that will help n tone down the ultramarine blue that we were putting in right but also i use this normally to go with my raw sienna to make my flesh tone so um, these are the colors that we're going to be working with. Uh, primarily, it's going to start out with the titanium white, though. Okay. Huh? Okay. I'm just okay. <laughs> I, I'm making commentary because Lu Luna and I were online with the guys from the game last night way, way, way into the morning. And so she's been sitting there going, are you awake, guy? And I'm like, yes, I'm awake. But just barely. Just barely. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm doctoring up, so. It's all good. Now you got to do the two by two with hands of blue. What was it? Two by two with hands of blue. Oh, yeah. So. Because I'm using this as a base, I'm just going to be using one tablespoon. And I don't like wasting pigment powder. That's fair. Because this stuff is expensive, some of the colors yeah. I have. Like, I just don't want to... Well, not only that, I'm going to need more of this at some point. So if we yeah. don't have an exact amount, the color is going to vary between books. Yeah. Which is the entire reason why I need my own version of skin tones. So we are going to start out with, I'm going to do a bit of the blue. Um, so I don't get pigment flying everywhere. I need a towel to wipe down the dry. Um, 
the one thing that I can say about pigment that's really good is when you're working with it, it seems to stick to any uh, non-metallic purpose uh, like thing if you wipe it really good. It'll stick to the paper towel. Yeah, it'll stick to the paper towel. So that's just been my experience. I'm also in Colorado. Um, humidity factors in people's uh, normal day-to-day -day life does affect this process. Mm -hmm. I want to point out that um, a lot of the stuff, like, if you notice, like, I just put a little bit down, and some of the particles are all the way out here. Right. But they are weighted down, so they are staying closer to there. I'm also standing, so I'm actually going to do the red first, because I don't... This may do a purplish undertone, and that's probably not what we're wanting. We're wanting a more yellow. Mm-hmm. But the red is going to give like more of like a pop of like an actual flesh tone instead of you know just a uh, yellow. Right. So, is there any other questions right now? Or no, no. Gonga? Just let okay. me watching. We're just watching. We're all excited. Okay. All right. Paint is being made. The other thing to know that um, I just want to point out, Mayan Red has a tendency of being very, very dry. Yeah, I, I mean, I can see your Titanium White it looks like a powder, whereas your Mayan Red ended up being a, a tablet. Yeah. <laughs> when it came out of your, when it came out of the, the measuring ah. thing. And so for... The blue, I think I'm actually going to do a little bit less than what I did for the red for you. So a little bit under. Okay. Um, since this is ultramarine blue, I have to be very careful on how I dispose of some of the stuff after. Because uh, technically when it combines with water, just straight water, not water with binder agent in it, um, ultramarine blue does have a poisonous effect. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like something that gradually happens over time. Right. Um, it just is uh, the combination of chemicals. Because that's basically what we're doing. Chemistry. That's one of the reasons why I hate to get paints on my hands. Like somewhere along the line, I heard that some of the paints were poisonous or paints had... You know, you know, things like filter into your subconscious. And they start to like eat at your subconscious. <laughs> I wonder if there was something like that that happened. Just doing a little bit of a pop of the lighter yellow for you. Okay. So that was about that was about um, so that was about ha uh, so that was about an eighth of a teaspoon, whereas the brilliant um, ultramarine type that color that I put down, that was just like slightly under a fourth. Right. Um, for that one, that's where you're going to get variation. Um, okay. but also this is a test color. I don't know how it's going to come out yet. <laughs> that's okay. Yeah. This is also a, a show. So if it screws yeah. up, you know, we promise we'll edit it and post just like we do with, with uh, Geek Tank. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this one I want to make sure that I use more the most of. Right. Uh, sorry, my thing was slipping down, and yeah. So this is a full teaspoon of raw sienna, and this is just to start out. Like we can add more to this, we can add less, but. 
when it combines with the the red and the white and the brilliant yellow it should happen and then the blue should just give us an undertone which is perfect yeah now i have the gold mica powder do you want to use the gold mica powder well i'm all about going and doing all kinds of crazy stuff okay so is, let's, there, is there a drawback to using the gold mica powder? The only drawback would be when you go to paint. That's about it. Since it's a paint, that would be every time, Pepper. <laughs> no, I mean, um, sorry. Let me rephrase that. Anytime you go to scan. Anytime I what? You go to scan your artwork. Oh, okay. Um, because mica powder has a tendency to show reflection when you're scanning. So that's the only reason why I don't know if you want this. Uh, you know, it, will it hurt the scan at all? Because it could make something very special out of the originals. You know what I mean? You know like, what? We can add a little bit. And yeah, if you bit, don't like it. kind of fun. You know? Yeah, and if you don't like it, then we'll ixnay it all together. Well, I've got these. You know, we were talking about this last Ooh, week. Okay, so here's what I'm talking about, if you guys just saw that. Yep, we saw that. <laughs> it is like glitter. <laughs> it gets everywhere. And that's why you need the mask. Right. But, I mean, I've got these, like, gold, the, the gold paints that we were talking about, the Japanese gold paints. Uh huh. Is that a fine mica or is it a coarse mica? Is the question coming in from? So Luke. with those, that is actually a fine mica. And I don't know if you notice this, but like as I'm putting that back in the bag, <laughs> it's like there's even more stuff coming out. So, all right, you know what? I'm just going to deal with that later. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, see that gold looks pretty. So I'm not. Oh, it, it does. It, it looks pretty, but it gets everywhere. Like, well, you know, like yeah, I have a hard time getting binder. it off of surfaces. Yeah, once the binder's in it, it won't get everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, this is this is fascinating, actually. <laughs> I'm like sitting here. Just, I was going to try to draw something or paint something while we were doing this, and I'm finding myself just watching. You know, I was like, this is really cool. Now I want to see how much of a disaster this is going to cause, you know. This is one of those things that's like, it looks like, oh, man, Pepper, you've really messed it up. And I know it's going to turn really cool. Uh -huh. because, you know, it's like, that's the way it always goes. <laughs> Well, the the good thing with the good thing with um, titanium white is it makes things a little bit more forgiving. Right. Uh, it also causes the paint to be slightly more opaque. So after using this paint, you may have to go over it again with your inks. Gotcha. Um, if you get any on the ink. I see. Is. So as you can see, Luna's what I'm doing here, because she says she uses mica and acrylic, but she usually mixes that at the end when prepping the flow medium. Yeah, that's what you t typically you do that with other mediums with watercolor. You kind of have to mix it right in at the beginning. Mm -hmm. So this is unique to the watercolor medium. Yeah, that's fair. And to go back to. Um, the uh your question guy with uh with the other one uh with the um with your question on what was it you asked me like before i started this <laughs> i'm already getting gas right okay so one oh. tablespoon of binder yeah. So I'm going to start with a tablespoon. Mm. 
really very much like baking or cooking. It's it's fascinating. Yeah, I mean, that's why I think I like it so much. It is very relaxing. It's, yeah. Um, it kind of looks like, at this point, it kind of looks like you're putting together some, like, weird concoction that you're about to put on someone's skin. Yeah. Well, and that's the idea, of course. It should look like a, a skin graft or something. Yeah. And... So Here goes pepper mixing drugs says. <laughs> <laughs> well, not quite. Um, but if you notice any of the pigment like popping up all of a sudden, like as I like do a pass and like all of a sudden it, like it pops up. Um, some of the pigment, like the Mayan red pigment that I put in there, naturally does not like water. So this is like a delicate dance. <laughs> right. All right, so I can, um, at this point, all of the pigment powder on my board has been completely nulled, and I can get rid of my mask at this point because I don't have it going up in the air. Right. Um, so we can, a lot of people, like, they'll do this step where we're currently at. Drug disguise is pain, says, says Donald. Hi, Donald. Welcome to the show. Hi, what's We're up? Making paints today. Yeah. Yes, we are. So there are some people who will be willing to stop at this point. Um, and I'm just kind of shaking out like the rest of whatever's left in in the tablespoon. Right. Um, and I'm gonna have that on standby. I'll take the oh, that has some leakage there. Um. Because I forgot to put this in a bottle form that would actually be conducive for the show. Right. That's all right. That's okay. So I'm hoping you've got a better eye on this. It looks kind of grayish over here on my side. <laughs> so It does look worse before it gets better. <laughs> gotcha. That's fair. <laughs> it, um, Luna, it says, does. Luna says that they are almost as expensive a hobby, drugs and painting. And so... Yeah. I'm not going to disagree with you. <laughs> um, there, yeah, there's just a combo of colors here, guy. That like right now they're not seeing like they're meshing, but they will mesh. That's fine. I, I will make them mesh. You. That's why we do this. Yeah. I have faith that you know what you're doing. Because if I, if you notice that if you notice what I just did is here's the gray color that you're talking about, and that's after I pressed it on the board. Right. It's got a much brighter. Yeah. Yeah, but it and and this could just be an artifact of the the uh, camera, of course. Same thing. I mean, yeah. Your yeah, skin is coming out pretty brightly pink every time you put your hands in front of the camera. So, you yeah. Know. So, and this is the mulling stage. Basically, you don't want to fight you don't want to do anything. You just basically kind of go. And as you see, as I showed you before with just pressing it down, the brightness. This is why you mull. This is why you have to mull. Um, it gets the color. I'm going to just set those aside. So uh, And we'll do this... Um, for like 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Wow. Right. Donald says it's like cooking. Don't judge the color till the final stage. Right. We were, we've been making many a cooking joke already so far. <laughs> well, the, the, the funnest thing about making paint and I'm just saying this like, for me is when I make like a brown or like, even if it's like a lighter brown, like people think I've made milk chocolate. Right. And it looks um, like that too. And a lot of people like do s compare this type of paint making to cooking because that's, I mean, like cooking, this is chemistry. Mm -hmm. You know, this is, you're, you're taking, 
things that you wouldn't think would go together and you're making them go together. It's very much like chemistry. But I'm hoping I like it sticks to the, <laughs> the it, come up. It, it will stick. It will definitely stick. Um, basically, what it is is this is a perfectly flat base to this. And then the glass that I'm doing this on, um, this all has like what it has is it has like little divots and stuff. So they're, they do create a suction. Mm hmm. And um, so, like, I can press down harder, but I don't want to break the glass. And all that will do is just one spot of the paint will actually. Um... <laughs> okay, so you're going to have to explain the, the mole because everybody's making comments that looks like an air hockey puck. Okay, so the mole here <laughs> is, um, here, I'll just do it this way. The Muller is um, a glass base uh, type deal with a handle every single time. Now, you can make your own Muller uh, at home. If you have the equipment, you just need to basically make a very flat surface on the base of any glass object that you have that you can have a handle on top of. Um, I've also seen people take uh, tacky, like that tacky stuff that you basically... Um, that you stick things like to the wall or like your locker when you were a kid. Um, you just want glass on glass. Uh, you want something that's not going to change the outcome or the color of your paint. And glass is going to probably be the safest of it. Bless you, Bill. Um, the muller itself can be rather expensive. So if you know a glass maker or a glass blower, go ahead and ask them if they can make one for you. Um, some people will do it cheap. Some people won't. <laughs> um, I have purchased mine. It was probably like the most expensive purchase that I had in all my paint tools. Wow. Um, but basically what it does is <sighs> without it, like, you see this chalky looking like texture, like the separation and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it homogenizes the paint. That's, it that's makes sure that what every you want. bit of crystal, every bit of powder in there is absolutely crushed. Um, not uh, exactly so crushed. Asking, we use the term dispersed. Um, Donald's asking flat and smooth plus glass keeps constant temperature. <laughs> um, so the glass, it, there's nothing about temperature in involved in this. Um, you don't want it too hot. You don't want it too cold. You want the, you want your room temperature to reflect any glass that you're using in this process. So the muller has to be room temperature. The um, the board, uh, the glass, the glass base, uh, glass board that you're using has to be room temperature. Um, that is why when you're doing this, you have to pay attention to your weather outside. If you have your windows open, or you have to pay attention to what the environment inside your home has developed into. So your AC unit. Um, what type of temperature you keep your house at, that sort of deal. Because different temperatures will keep this like from drying fast. Yeah, because like now it's becoming a paint, so it's going to start to dry. Right. I hope I answered the question. <laughs> I hope so too. Did did he answer the question, Donald? Do you have a follow up? Follow up's fine. We, we're all like fascinated by this. Just let me know when I get to the ten minute mark so we can test it. Okay. You you're coming up on the, well. You still have about four minutes. Yeah.
I have to make the popping noise every time you do that. <laughs> well, it kind of makes a popping noise, just a low-grade one. It doesn't get picked up by the mic, so I have to make it for it. <laughs> um, because we are working with a more opaque pigment, titanium white is a more opaque. Um, you're going to find that if you start making your own paint, um, you'll find that certain pigments actually don't allow um, you to see through. Yeah. Uh, what this does do, and I've tested it uh, before with other colors that I've had mixes with titanium white. Um, you want to test on how far you can push going over your inks with it naturally. Uh huh. Uh huh. So, um, Luna's got a quick question, though. How do you keep the paint pliable so it doesn't dry on the palette? So, this is a watercolor base. Um, my formula, uh, the way I make paint, is so that it, it can be reactivated once it's wet. Um, but once it's on the palette, uh, what I do is I use these guys. I don't know if you can see them. I have uh, my sample pans, and then I have my bottle caps. Right. Um, the reason why I say this process, because if it's on a paint palette and you're using it as acrylic, acrylic dries naturally as well. Mm -hmm. So you have to kind of do the same preventive measures when you're, when you're trying to prevent your acrylic paint from drying. Mm -hmm. um, that makes sense. Now, for this, you want it to dry. You don't want it to. You don't want it to. Um, you you don't want it to stay wet uh, because this is handmade paint and the handmade binder. Uh, moisture in this process is not good uh, after it's been turned into paint because mold. Right. Right. So Donald was following up and saying chocolate makers use cold stone to mix it for different results. So I think he was asking, does the temperature affect the the, the paint? I have to make the pop noise. <laughs> um, so yes, uh, I have actually made paint on a hot day, and it was a hot, dry day in Colorado. And I actually had to get a uh, get distilled water out and I actually had to keep adding it as because the moisture level of the paint while I was mulling had to actually was like evaporating right fast. Um, so on those types of days, I know I need to have the uh, water handy. Right, right. But, Real quickly, I'm going to say hello and good evening slash good morning to our buddy on Twitch who is joining us in from South Korea. So, and for oh. an explanation, in case you haven't been here for the whole show, uh, Pepper is making uh, a, a special mix of watercolor paint. So I actually, for, for me, I have, I have requested a color. So that's what Pepper is doing right now is making a color for a skin tone for my character because the character will be constantly used over many, many books. And so I want to make sure that the color doesn't vary or change between books. Right. So that's what we're doing. We're making paint, which is kind of cool, actually. We've, we've all been sitting here just watching in, in fascination. Your time is up. We are past 10 minutes now. All right. With that... <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna. So if you notice, it does look like he, he does look like he's making cookies. <laughs> yes, yes, I, I do understand a lot of the cooking a references. A lot of this. jokes. <laughs> um, there are. Uh, I just want to point out to Donald's uh, quandary earlier. Um, so there are paint. There are there are paint makers who use marble slab instead of glass um, because it's not porous as most people think for paint making at least. 
Um, but that makes for, think ice cream. <laughs> yeah, right now it's actually resembling coffee ice cream. It does look like coffee ice cream, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, Luna, Luna says the amazing thing is that you got the pigments right right in the very beginning. You got all the, the color mixes correct. You know, you're just like, we're going to do a little bit of blue and a little bit of red and a little bit of yellow and a little bit more of this yellow and a little bit more of this yellow. And poof, you've got it right. <laughs> well, the, the thing is with skin tones and a lot of people, uh, a lot of people who aren't artists tend to not realize how many colors goes into one skin tone. Yeah. Skin tones are hard. Yeah. It's why I can't buy this skin tone at Guy Ray's. I mean, I, when I got, when I went to Guy Ray's, I could get my skin tone, you know, but I couldn't get any other skin tones. And it's so aggravating because, of course, my characters aren't all me. And so. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of the times what I do is I, like, if you see any of those vintage ads where um, it's a woman waiting for her paint, uh, or <laughs> her paint, her makeup uh, to be made uh, mm -hmm. at like a makeup counter. Cause that's what makeup counter girls used to do. They actually used to use um, chemistry mm -hmm. to take makeup pigments and formulate them for people's skin. And mm -hmm. they had to do it just by looking at them. Yep. Um, that's so that's, that, yeah, that's why I'm like, you, you've got the skill. I know you can tell skin tones. Well, and that's basically what made me want to start doing this. Because um, you needed custom skin tones? Custom skin tones. No, I'm being serious. Like, that was one of the major things. Is like, if I try to do what I normally did um, for paint, all of a sudden, like, the moment that I was like, oh, I need this paint for this person, all of a sudden, like... Like my character who I wanted this color, I go to scan it and bam, it's like a completely dark color that I never wanted. And it's like technology needs to advance a little bit more because I don't I don't approve I don't approve of this. I, I need all right. So here's I'm what we're doing after ten minutes. I, I'm chuckling because uh, Luna says she's always had to keep adding more color until it looked right, which that's the way I would do things is just keep adding color until it was correct. Um, Donald says he wants to make art with taffy, editable, edible art. So, and, and yeah, you can do that. You can do that. Yep. And that just that. So, right now I'm just testing it out. Yeah, that looks good. And it's, it's funny because I was about to say, I don't know, Pepper, that's not coming out as yellow as I thought. But just when you put it down on the paper, it looks perfect. So so this is like a dark, and then this is the light right. version of the color. Is that the kind of range that you're looking for? Yeah, that's what I was saying is like, it looks really good. I mean, once you lay it out on the on the page, it looks fine. Okay, cool. Because that's what, like, you're my client in this, so I need to make sure that I'm making you happy. Yeah, I mean, obviously, we, we're doing the best we can in COVID because, of course, I'd rather see it in person. But, you know, I'm, I'm glad. I mean, it, it looks pretty solid. I also, you know, I'm going to say, does it look right to you? Well, it definitely needs to be mulled a little bit more for okay. all the color to kind of, like, pop. So in total, there's going to be another, like after this, like I just started again, but like uh, you can time another 10 minutes for me. Okay. We're going to do this three times. Okay. Okay. And then it will be done. I purposely chose pigments for you, guy, that actually only take about 30 minutes to mull. <laughs> there are pigments that take longer? Yes. Um, there are quinacridone uh colors which take about uh for me take about an hour and a half wow. um but then you have um uh what is it um 
There's another color that I have that takes about eight hours. Of mulling? Yes, mulling. Because basically it has to do with how well they receive to water. Wow. Yeah. Uh, Luna is saying, I think the gray overtones are on the camera. And it's because yeah, I'm sorry about that. Is what, what she's saying. Yeah, because once you lay that out on the paper, so what I'm actually also going to do is once I'm done with this, I'm actually going to take a sample of each time that we've done it, put it on the page, and then at the end, I'm going to actually show you the progression of the samples. That works. Um, I should probably yeah. quickly do this. We're all like, we're all sympathizing with your arm after eight hours of mulling and mulling. <laughs> Um, you know what? It, like, I switch my arms quite frequently. Right? <laughs> um, my left arm is actually better than my right arm. Fair. So, Fair. like, uh, I've never really talked about this, but I have some severe, like, nerve stuff um, that has happened to me. So, like, I, I am very attentive to when to switch my arms. Right. So you don't burn burn an arm out, so to speak. Yeah, but um, oh, and the color that takes about eight hours is a variation of a, a thalo color, which we all have known my my deep abiding love of that particular color. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I definitely have a love of that specific color. <laughs> yeah, it is the best color on the planet. I'm so enamored with it. <laughs> So I am noticing one thing um, about this as it's drying. I'm just going to add a little bit more of your binder, the binder for you. Okay. And just a little bit. You don't want a whole, whole lot. Um, I'm just looking on how it dried and I just noticed something. And so like basically what that's telling me is, hey, add this. And so I'm going to stop. Know, I, I, for a Donald, I have been thinking about a good solid mull over joke for this entire time. And you did. That was good. He's like, you need robot assistance to mull it over and over like a good idea. We mull over and over. <laughs> <laughs> there is actually a um, there is an automatic muller. muller. Uh, they cost about a thousand dollars. Yeah, I'm not into that. I don't have a thousand dollars to do, devote to that. Yeah, and they also require space. And the room I'm working in right now, once I get my adoption to go through, um, yeah, it becomes my child's room. So yep. <laughs> I can't do this in this room. Um, <laughs> so we should enjoy it while we can. Yeah. And it, it is a really hard job. For, that's coming in from Twitch, so... This, this just is amazing. Oh, the computer has said we should stand up, and well, you're already standing up, so you can keep mulling. I'm going to stand up and stretch, and all the rest of us can stand up and stretch and shake everything out, because otherwise... There we go. All right. I'm not drawing, so I don't need to really work on my wrist or anything. I do feel bad for you, Pepper. <laughs> don't be. Don't be. <laughs> um, so as you can see, like the, the binder, if you notice, so this binder in the paint mixture right here. Yeah. If you see this with like with your paint note, this is what you get <laughs> when you use a tube of artist or low grade watercolor. Right. That separation. This is what you do not want. Right. Um, is separation. Um, because a lot I've of times. I've had like I'll pour up. I'll, I'll squeeze the paint out. And I get that slime first. And it's the, the binder comes out first. Yeah. So and then once you get a little bit of color. And then you have to like mix it into the binder. And then. And it's not a good drop. thing to see. Right in my opinion. Um, 
if you're if you're trying to do professional watercolors, that's what you want to look what look out for. If you see that, then that paint is not the quality you probably want. Some people work with it, other people don't. Um, there's some high end student watercolors that are almost like artist watercolors that if you just add like your own pigment binder to, you can make it like it makes it very well. Um, you can kind of turn them into a more professional watercolor grade. Right. Um, right. And usually, but they sometimes they actually have the same issue, like where what what I just showed you is they still separate slightly. Hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. Well, I figure everything probably separates to some degree. I mean, you have your paints that are super expensive, but they've been sitting in a closet for 35 years. They probably separated. Yeah, they probably did. Yeah. But what you notice also when they do separate is they get a little bit chalky. Yeah. And they also, um, they also like have a hard time. Like when you're painting, they create a lot more streaking. Right. And that's what I'm trying to prevent. Fair. Like, this was very smooth, but if you notice that the dispersion didn't really work the way I wanted it to. Right. You have one minute left on this mulling pass. Oh, wow. Yep. As they say, time sure is fun when you're having flies. Oh, okay. I didn't get it off. Yay. Yay. Not off the edge. I actually was just thinking about that. I was like, gosh, it'd be kind of cool to to do like a border around the outside edge. But then I was like, no, nah, all, all you end up with is just paint stuck in those, <laughs> in the gutter. That's pretty much what it is. Yeah. Wow. We can go over a little bit because I did add something. Right. That's fine. <laughs> What's up? Donald's making more mall jokes. <laughs> hey, you know what? The best the best kind of jokes is mulling jokes. I'm sorry. Right? They it's are. True. It is true. You know, I've been asked if I have if I ever did mulls uh, mulled cider this way. And I was like, no, I don't have that color. Maybe I should make it. Yeah. But if you notice that it's starting to get a little bit brighter. It is. It's brightening up. So. And I think Luna's right. I think the gray is because the thing underneath it's gray, which yeah. makes me think, once again, I'm really glad you're doing this because I would have freaked out by now and said, <laughs> it's too gray. And then, you know, added a ton of yellow or something to it and made it just the wrong color. I also know that, like, because, like, normally I was working on a more of a warmer surface before I got this one. I had a clear right. under mat and, um, or a clearer mat. Like, for me, like, that was working out. But what I noticed is I didn't like the way that cool tones were coming through. Sure. And I couldn't find another, I couldn't find, like, a plain white one. I could only, I had my choice of black or gray. Mm. That's pretty rough. Yeah. So. All right. How far have I gone? If you adjust in your head, it's okay. Yeah. So you're two minutes over. Okay, that should be good. Okay. So, um, interesting because I think the phrase mulling it over comes from literally something like what you're doing. Yeah. Because this is like a time process. Um, That's a good so question. Just to let you know, like the history, some of the history of this, um, painters uh, back in the day when, you know, art was respected and actually paid for <laughs> appropriately. We're not bitter or anything. No, no, not at all. Um, and people didn't discard us. Um, and, you know, children wanted to be artists and stuff like that. They would have the, the 
master artists would have their apprentices. Not, not journeyman or anything else like that, uh, but the apprentices, they would make the paint. Mm -hmm. That's what you would be shown how to do first. So you would have a bunch of 11, 10, uh, 11 12, 13, and 14-year-old, um, typically boys back in the day, if you were talking about Italy, um, just mulling paint pretty much almost on a daily basis. So a lot of artists got <laughs> major workouts with their arms because of it. I can see that. Donald, um, a prime example. Uh-huh. Donald asks, would plexiglass be different? Plexiglass will not work. Um, and the reason why is it's a porous surface. Even though it's hard, even though it's resin, it will get paint stuck inside it. So it would be like if you're in a pinch and you only have one color that you have to make, plexiglass yeah. is your go-to. If you have, if you want to make more than one color on a board, glass. Right. Or marble. You can use marble. But marble is expensive. You can Unless you go to a secondhand store that sells scrap pieces of marble. Now George is fascinated with, with your painting here. He's joined me on the table. Oh, okay, cool. So, and just like before, we're going to do a test at this point. Okay. All right. I'll try to get a little bit more paint on this time. I don't think attacking his brush is going to work, George. I know you think it will, but it won't. Huh? My oh, cat you're talking I about you're talking about your cat. Yeah, my kitten has joined us, and the kitten wants to attack your brush because it's wiggling across the screen, but he doesn't know. I mean, obviously, you know, he's a kitten. Oh, Donald bought a truckload of marble back in two thousand three for three hundred dollars. Do oh. you still have it all? <laughs> Do you still have it? That'd be interesting. Okay. Yeah, it's interesting. He doesn't usually join me anymore. He hangs out with the kid, but the kid's in the other room in a meeting. So the kid's been turning or closing his door so he can so he's not disturbing our our show. Right. Okay. And thus the cat is with me. So as you notice... Sold it and donated the money, he says. Hmm. <laughs> All right. <laughs> if we you guys a... were with us... Um, so I'm just going to mark 20 minutes. Um, okay. Mind you, my handwriting is not perfect. Uh, whose okay. handwriting is perfect? Actually, you know, my, my dad had a theory because he still, he still holds this theory, that the artists can't write very well and, and the writers can't art very well. Because my dad's got beautiful, beautiful handwriting. But he does, he can't, you know, I, I mean, he's a, he did do drafting, but he's never done art art. Drafters. My handwriting I, is horrible. <laughs> drafters, I always think, can do really good cleric, uh, club, fancy writing. Right. Because I can't say calligraphy. I got it. Calligraphy. I got it for you. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, <laughs> anyway. Walking on the monitor. No, you can't go over the monitor, you goober. So, um, that looks good. Like, I can see that there's a difference in that color. Right. And then, um, so this is a lot warmer, but this is starting to notice, like, you're starting to notice some slight variations to kind mm -hmm. of get like a speckling and that's what you want right. for skin tone you don't want it to be an even layer you want it to be kind of like a little bit separating 
but not so much that it's so noticeable that like it'll be overtly like the darkest part blends a much easier into the lightest part and it's easier to flow that better um gotcha. with the paint so and at this point we're gonna go into our last one so this is the last mall last time we're mulling this over and if you notice about this, like it's gotten thicker as yes. we do this. Totally gotten thicker. Um, yeah, you mold to get thicker, man. <laughs> um, it's purring so loudly. <laughs> um, just to just to make sure uh, about the water question earlier. <laughs> um, Can you hear him? Yeah. <laughs> I stuck um, it the microphone, so that's fair. One of the uh, other things about the mulling process it is <laughs> evaporating the water from the, gotcha. the uh, binder. So you're intentionally evaporating the water. Right, but you're doing it in a way where it's controlled. Right. He says if we added, Donald says if we added feathers, it would go from mulling to molting. Aw. <laughs> why would we want to add feathers? That's my question. Right? I'm sorry. Did I just ruin a joke because I was being analytical? <laughs> I don't know. It would be like tarred and feathers at that point in time. Oh. Um. Well, there are people that put, like, weird stuff in their watercolor paint. I mean. I mean, little flecks of gold and things like that I've seen in watercolors. Yeah. So I'm not going to buy that. But. Well, I mean, it has its purpose, but in reality, it, like, really doesn't add anything for me. So I don't do it. Um, I did have... Uh, I have some swirl, like I use, this is what I'm using for my October prompts. And this is a swirl paint. I, now this is my own. Um, Does it give you like a different effect depending on where the brush goes in on the paint? Basically you get two colors in one pan. Okay. You get, um, I have a yellow and I have a red. In that, oh, okay. So I'm also not seeing as much of the glass plate anymore. That's mm -hmm. a good sign that we're, we're, we're almost there, by the way. Oh, gotcha. Um, uh, <laughs> so that color, I can get a skin tone if I water it down that's more pink. Um, I can get a yellow. I can get an orange, I can get variations of orange, and then I can get red and like an orangish red um, out of it. But it is a crimson mixed with a uh, mixed with a yellow. Right. Um, and I see that because you're a goober. The the good thing about it is um, I like the color combo. The mm -hmm. crimson is slightly blue, but still turns orange for me. And that's because of I use the same the the same brand um, of pigments that I that I like basically I used. It's the same manufacturer of pigments. Right. Um that makes sense. So I'm just kind of showing you, like... It is very thick. I like yeah. it. And plus, it also needed to come back together for a bit before I finish mulling it. Sure. So, any other questions about this process or anything like that, I'll gladly answer as best as my abilities. Right? No, actually, I'm fascinated by it. And your hand moving back and forth got attacked by George just a second ago. He was like, that's it. I'm done. You've been moving too much. You had to stop. 
<laughs> that's what rats do. <laughs> that thing. Um, yeah, like, I mean, I don't have a cat anymore. No. Um, he passed earlier this year. Um, but Nacho, Nacho knew not to come near my art table. Yeah, uh, and generally speaking, George isn't allowed up here, but we're we're not drawing right now. We're yeah. watching you, so George is allowed up here for just right now. Yeah, no. He definitely not, thinks you're moving too much. He's not, now attacking not, you again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, there, I just want to mention there are some channels on YouTube. Like, I have some videos of me making paint, but... Also, like, I don't, if you don't want just my videos, um, I need to put more videos up uh, soon. Um, basically, there's uh, a few on there that I actually enjoy watching. Um, mm -hmm. Arlisha Bean, I believe, or Arlisha. Um, I think I know who you're talking about. She makes her own watercolors. She just started um, doing Patreon for hers. And um, she's doing like a three color set, I think, for a reward, um, which I would love to do. I just don't have the confidence for that yet. So I don't know. This looks awesome to me. I mean, I could probably do it. But I'm still figuring out, like, if that's something that I want to do for as far as Patreon goes. There's a lot of people that are making paint now. Right. And so at this stage, just to give everyone, like, a, a know what it's feeling like, I, it's like getting really thick. If you've ever had to try to temper chocolate, that's basically the consistency I'm working with right now. That makes sense. And it looks like it, which yeah. I mean, I think that's one of the reasons why we're all like, whenever you do browns, we're all like, oh, we want to eat that. Yeah. But trust me, this is not going to taste good. No, no, no. I can imagine it, it won't taste good at all. I mean, it will taste sweet at the beginning. So... Donald asks, would alcohol mixed in shorten its drying time or would it change its color? Um, so certain pigments will change color with alcohol. That's why it's not really recommended. Uh, it's also not archival as much. Like, are you talking like rubbing alcohol or are you talking? I guess like, it'd have to be whatever alcohol would be best for this. So. Okay. Um, I don't think you'd be mix, mixing it with whiskey, but you know. I, I mean, it would be rather expensive, and wasting whiskey is always a bad thing in my book. Um, right. You can waste gin. Um, but also at the same time, alcohol does have a tendency for certain pigments to be discolored. Um, the other thing is you can add it, but just know that you may want to have distilled water on the standby just in case it goes too quickly. Right. right. Um, that makes sense. Yeah. But you will have to UV coat every single piece you do with that paint um, so that it lasts longer because mixing mixing alcohol into paint sometimes is not archival. And what I mean by that is it won't last as long as, say, if you just use distilled water only. It's the same problem we have with our copics. Yeah. It's, um, I mean, as much as I love my Copics, and I really do love my Copics, that's the same problem we have. They're not archival, and after a while, the, the color will fade. Yeah. Start to go away. All right. So, we actually got done earlier than I expected. Yeah. Um, this is a consistency of very warm butter. And that's what you want. Basically, yep. rubbing alcohol was what Donald's after, I think. Oh, rubbing alcohol will not work at all. Work at all. Yeah. I, I was just adding funny things because I thought it'd be hysterical to say, how about putting whiskey in there? You know, because I'm sure that in the you know, 1920s, that was totally something that was going on. <laughs> 
Well, actually, you're not that far off. Like in uh, medieval times, in the Renaissance and stuff, uh, a lot of the people just use straight up alcohol or um, basically base alcohol that we would say is moonshine. Right. To lacquer the paintings. Well, I mean, what do you think lacquer was made out of? So. Right. All right. And at this point, I'm getting a chair. Because it hurts standing up for three years. Well, no, it's that, and I need more control over my body, and I want to be closer to the ground. Fair. Uh, now that I'm closer to it, I understand what Luna was saying about the gray. Right. It's interesting because it does not come out gray when you paint it. Right. But, that, that, but from this angle, from up here, it really looks gray. I mean, you know, we, if you were to say, we're going to use this to paint people, I'd be like, zombies? You know? <laughs> but then you put the color out on paper and it looks perfect. Yeah. So colors can be deceiving. So this is the 30 minute mark. So I'm going to do several swatches for you. Okay. So this is like the ultimate, like, if you lay it out, this is what it's going to look like. And then this is adding a little bit of water. And if you kind of get the gist, I'm basically just making kind of boxes that are getting lighter and lighter and lighter. Right. Because the more water uh, you use... There are so many different consistencies. As there are different brewing processes and materials. I agree. Well, there are different materials for sure that I can say. Um, I know last week I had touch base on like basically... Uh, one of the paints that I showed you guys, it's fermented. Mm -hmm. um, so there are watercolor paints that um, Mission Gold puts out. And Mission Gold, they actually put them in, like, in this specialized clay pot. And like that's basically what it is. It's a technique that was developed by um, uh, artists in Korea. Mm -hmm. So, uh, all right. So there's your variation looks beautiful and so as you can see let's do a gradient of it to kind of show a little bit more So it blends right in. It does blend nicely, doesn't it? Nice. And if we add it down here, it disperses back into the color pretty nicely as well. Yeah, it does. So in a more of a controlled way, but still disperses. Mm-hmm. Wow. And that's what I like. I like a little bit of dispersion. So that's on how I make my paints. It, you can get different um, different dispersion stuff. Uh, again, like last week when I was saying there's uh, certain products on the market now that actually will help you get that. Um, I would always use a synthetic stuff because I'm sorry, I don't want stuff from uh, an Oxus vial. Um, oh, come on. <laughs> I don't. I'm sorry. I don't. It's just not me. I agree. It's a nice color gradient. Yeah. So, um, and then as you can see, the thicker, the more paint you have, like the different variations that will naturally occur. Mm -hmm. And because we put a little bit, a little bit of that gold mica powder in there, mm -hmm. if you notice, it's, it has a sparkle. It has a sparkle. Um, but at the 10 minute mark, it's very apparent it's there. 20 minute, it's loosely there. And this is after half an hour. 
Mm-hmm. In which case, it's very integrated, and it's almost like you have to kind of look back at it a second and realize it's in there. Which is perfect. That would be yeah. perfect. It, it will mean the, the, the pieces that are originals will have a, a little bit of a glow, something special to them. Right. It will look just a little bit different than the scans and the prints and things like that. Yeah. And uh, for some people, what they've, um, I, I I know this is going to like probably sound a little bit weird, with a lot of gold uh, mica um, products or just basically metallic products on the, on the market, um, there's a lot of people who will s- take their prints and they will add a little bit of that to them to make them special. And I, I think that if you just add a little bit to the original, uh, it, it makes all the difference. Right. Well, that was one of the things that we've been discussing is the idea of selling the original pages. Uh-huh. You know, specific thing. So not just sell the book, but sell the original pages. And I'm going to have a number of, I mean, because like I'm going to be digitally drawing the ink, yeah. the inking part. So we'll have to see how much that disturbs the inking. Well, it depends also um, how you print it out. Like I, I like I said last week, my printer, um, I use toner, not ink, right for my printing. And toner allows you to go over it with watercolor because it's waterproof. The type I use, um, but it's also eco friendly. I just want to point that out because I have a Rico printer, and Rico is very, very environmentally conscious because Rico is actually a Japanese company. Right. And a lot of Japanese companies that do print work um, think about the environment um, very much so. I've got, got a question. Um, uh-huh. Are you going to put uh, put that ultimately in a bucket too, one of the plastic guys? Uh, I can, but I'm doing yours first. So I'm just showing – sorry. So this is what Guy is going to get. Well, that's what I was asking is, could I request one of your little plastic things over there? Because that'll snap into my widgets. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can do that. Thank okay. you. Hey, I, I can do that, that for one, you, Guy. The, the, the bottle cap won't snap into my my blue, my little blue tin, but that will. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. You're welcome. It. I'll try to fill it up as best as possible, but um, these do sink down as they dry. That's fine. Um, and so you'll probably end up getting pretty much all of my paint that I'm making right now. That's fair. So I'm uh, I am going to. Uh, Fill up this one just in case you ever run out and you really, really need it. Familiary. Well, we've got it. Luckily, we've got this all on video. So if we need to make more, we know what we did. Well, and you also wrote down everything, right? Uh, yes. I'll take that as a no. You know me well. <laughs> no, but I will write down everything. I'll go back through the video and check it out again and write it all down. All right. Because that's a good that's a good solid point there. Because uh... <laughs> like I didn't really have time to write it down. Like I was trying to explain what I was doing, and I'm like, hmm. I was too busy watching. <laughs> this was fascinating. <laughs> All right, and I'll do another one of these so that you have this. Huh? Thank you. I was going to say, yeah, if I could get two of those little buckets, that'd be awesome. Yeah. I'll even reimburse you for the buckets. I know they're like 75 cents a piece or something. I mean, it's up to you. Like, I told you that, like, you know, my, my paint goes and it's sold at... $12.50 Twelve dollars and fifty cents for a pan. Mm-hmm. This size, uh, the the this size pan, not this one. This one's a bit more. 
Right. Um, and I do that so that I can make sure that I can make pain again. Yeah, that makes sense. So. Um, what I will say is with titanium, like the titanium, like I'm going to go back to this pigment a lot because it causes some really interesting but fun effects. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Paint. Um, a, it bubbles a lot. <laughs> um, so like when I'm doing this process, like I will go back and I'll take out the bubbles, but the bubbles are basically put back in the moment that I start doing this process almost mm -hmm. every single time. So. Especially if it's thick. Yeah. But it's actually drying pretty quickly. Kind of the air bubbles as it gets in there, and I can see that. Yeah. Um, there was, there oh, was a few pans that I've made of paint that basically w had so many bubbles that I had to basically take a needle and pop them by hand. Right. Donald's uh, saying your time and effort is worth paying for to those who do this. And I absolutely agree. I had gone to Gyrie's to get skin tones for all my characters and um, the ultimate goal. Yeah. And, and we've got agreement from Twitch. So um, the ultimate goal here, of course, is to have one pan for each character specifically so that they can all be, you know, I, I just can, you know, paint one character and then go through and paint the other character and then go through and paint the other character and all their skin tones stay in their uniform. Um, yeah. And since skin tones can be so close, you know, we don't realize how close skin tones are to one another unless you have someone from Africa who's dramatically different. You know, all right. of our skin tones are just a small amount of, of change and stuff like that, that I knew if I was mixing the paints every time, the, the skin tones would just be all over. Mm. And I'd never get it straight. Yeah. I do want to point out that I did formulate this so that it's very easy to be diluted for you. Yeah. I appreciate that. Um, because that's what you're going to need. Because as you were aware with the swatches, it can go dark really quickly. Yeah. Um, it will pair nicely with warmer or with cool tones, but there are some warm tones that will definitely, definitely go with, um, especially if it's anything that will go with raw sienna, like that tone. I think right. you'll do perfectly well with that, um, which I think you have a blue and a green suit for her. Yes, you're right. She's in blue and green. Yeah. That's um, right. So. And then I'll do one more bottle cap for you. <laughs> this is a lot of paint. Hey, it's, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to lie. Like when it's, I'm in full production yeah. mode, this is you're, you're yeah, producing. basically a third of what I normally make. This right. A very small batch. I'm going to, Bring up the character so we can look at her while we're here. Now, mind and you, I was just going off of memory of your characters. So right. if I am off. We haven't established much of her yet. So we haven't established a whole lot. Oh, I was talking about her skin tone. I was going off of memory of what I remember seeing. Yeah. Well, we were talking about it. So, so. Um, Donald asks, can the paint last longer or st still be good frozen? Uh, I'm not sure what that... that what do you mean by frozen? Like put in the freezer? Yeah, because that's kind of... Uh, I, I, I don't know. I mean, Donald, I think ultimately we're going to let these dry out. And then once they dry out, I just put water on my brush and put it in the pan and that'll activate the top layer of the paint. Um, the, I mean, this will ultimately be those watercolor pans that, that are in my, like my, my, my blue container over there. Yeah. So keep me busy for a long, long time.
right, and then don't take this the wrong way, but I'm stealing some for myself. No, 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 absolutely. I'm like sitting there going, uh, if each pan's twelve fifty, <laughs> doing the math in my head. <laughs> Dude, I, I, these are not going to be full pants. Oh, okay. I'm letting you know this now. Because once they dry, like once they're completely dry, they will sink down. Right. Um, sometimes you'll get like really weird holes. Um, other times you don't. But like I'm filling them pretty high. This is not something you, uh, you normally want to do. Normally, right. you would want to do kind of like maybe a third of this and then move on to the next pan. That's um, I don't, I don't think, I don't think that it would be wise to always um, fill this high. That um, works. Now I have just a little bit left. Okay, so for those of you who are wondering, this is the character that we're talking about here. So that's the this is this is her skin tone, or at least it's supposed to be her skin tone. So we'll we'll get that. That's but I wanted to have a static skin tone for her so that she didn't have so that it never changed. And sadly, like I was saying, all the paints that I can find are my skin tone, and that's not what I wanted. So that's the main character. She's the captain, and I think. She's right now, I've changed from a light blue to a darker blue. So she's got like more of a royal blue. So I can <clears throat> use that fellow blue that we know I love so much. That anyway, phthalo blue? I love it so much. I love that blue. <laughs> so, but I've gone with that and a much darker green now. So she's got more like a forest green and that phthalo blue. Then this, then the paint that I made for her skin tone for you will definitely work. Good. And at that note, everything else is on the board. Not All right. Hard so hard. that's pretty much it. I'm going to come back over to the screen and we're going to talk. There we go. That was awesome, Pepper. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> All right. And the rest of the show will now be us watching it paint dry. No, I'm just kidding. I am kidding. It will not. I'm back, so you can uh, switch back to D spotlight. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that paint is going to probably take minimum three days to dry. I, I wasn't expecting that I'd drive over tonight and pick it up. However, I will try to get a couple of Chang pictures up so that we can put her out there. And in, in like, like I said, I really want to do that phthalo blue. Um, and I don't know if you saw that. I mean, uh, here, I'll bring that. That's the picture that I have most recently of her in design. So. Oh, oh, my God. I got her really close to the digital. That's yeah. really close. That's what I was saying. You're like almost spot on with that color. That yeah. is perfect. Oh, I did. I did say I wanted to show you over here on this camera. Wait, I need you to turn off. There we go. All right. There we go. So is this better yeah. than the other one? Yeah, that's a lot better. Let's put this side by side and see if I can't. No, I can't do that. How do you make this work? So this this area right here. Yeah. Yeah, it's really close. Okay, cool. And uh, guy, when I give you the paint, you're gonna get this too. So, did we lose you, guy? No, I just have to switch. Oh, we lost your audio. Okay, there we go. Oh, it's you know what it was? It was because uh, as when my camera turns off, it turns off my audio too. So when I had you and the picture up on either side, it apparently was just taking the audio from my screen, which nothing's going on on my screen. So there's yeah. that. I'm sorry. I'm it, a little bit. Um, overheated. Yeah. It's not like you didn't just have a great workout. This is like the, the, the painter's workout. 
You just sit there and bowl things. So, well, I mean, it, um, so like I was saying, um, when you that process was typically handled by uh, if you entered your child in a guild, right? Your child would be doing that's the first thing that they would do, right? Right. Um, and then as they progressed, other people underneath them as they aged, they would be supervising and teaching the next set of young children that came into the guild as apprentices. Yeah. Um, and then eventually you stop doing that and you move on to the sculpting part because guilds back in the day for at least art guilds used to actually basically cover all mediums and show, okay, you sculpt it this way. And then ultimately you would break off into your mediums that you prefer. Right. Right. Um, but with, with this process, it's like, it, it kind of um, reminds me like when I make a, when I buy a paint, a tube, mm -hmm. like that's a manufactured one. But when I buy another person's handmade watercolor paint, it's like, Oh no, no, no. There's a lot of work that went into this. Oh it's yeah. Worth it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's uh, other people that have um, that price base off of the um, just a single pigment. And then they go from there. So I do have cheaper. I, I said $12.50 because it's the rounded yeah. that I normally have. Yeah. yeah. Um, that, and if you ever buy my, if anyone buys my set, it's three, uh, it's, um, six paints for $150. Which is actually not bad at all. Not yeah. bad at all. Especially if you consider that that's the best part about this is that now we can see just how much work goes into it. Yeah. Now that's, and like I said, that's just a half an hour of work. And you saw in how much paint I got. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's a lot. And then there are other times where if I get it thicker, it dries it, when it dries, it like doesn't sink at all. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I love it. Yeah. Yeah. That was very smooth there. And I don't know, you can read the uh, captions over here now in the chat. Yeah. So see Donald saying experience, yeah. which is key into knowing what goes into making paints. And I agree. I agree. Yeah. Um, we're, we're paying for the knowledge. We're paying for the experience, which is what I, all of us artists, you know, you're not paying for the 30 minute drawing. You don't pay him per hour, you know, an hourly wage for, the, for him to do 30 minutes. You're painting yeah. for the years and years and years and years that it took to get to 30 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, you do. <laughs> um, I'm kind of lucky in the sense of um, as far as paint making goes, like when I've done mixes of like particular colors, I almost like about 85% of the time I actually get the color I was expecting. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, that's what Luna was saying. And I was like, he's like, I'm going to put a little bit of this, a little bit of this, a little bit of this. And I'm like, okay, but we're talking about skin and it's so finicky. And yeah. Like, no, it's all good. And poof, poof, and I'm like, uh, he's not going to do it right. He's not going to come out right. And in the end, almost exactly like the, the picture. Yeah. yeah. Uh, enough that I'm not going to care. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. I because I've been looking at over here, you know, which one of these guys am I going to be using for her skin tone and stuff like that. coming out of my, my set of, of copics. I've got to unify all of these. And I think what I'm going to do is go back and unify everything to the watercolor so that, yeah. so that the digital is exact and that the, the, the copics exact. That way I can do any kind of fast drawings through using my copics. I know exactly what skin tone she's got. And ultimately what I'll have is I'll have a, a layout page for that. I'll show you exactly what, what yeah. that looks like here. And well, I'm going to, uh, and if you remember, like, I don't know, I didn't hear your reaction, but you are going to get this guy. Yeah. You're going to get the physical copy of this along with the paint. So you can kind of better suit so we can see what a what a real artist does with watercolors instead of what I would end up doing. With no, what I'm saying, <laughs> no, I'm saying that you can find your Copic match a little bit better with this. Sure. 
Oh, I'm, I'm teasing. Were... I'm teasing. <laughs> <laughs> I know that I'm. I'm like really, still really young at the at the watercolors. I'm still very new to watercolors, and so it's kind of like, uh, what was I doing again? Yeah. So ultimately, I will have for my Copic side this. This will be what I'll have for a Copic side. Okay. And so that'll give me my codes. You can see my codes up here. And that'll give me the... the I haven't done one of these sheets yet for, for Li Chang, but I will. There will come a point. Yeah. So, um, so what do you want to call this color? That's a good question. Should we just call, <laughs> we call it Chang Beige? Because it's it is specifically Li Chang's skin color. So I mean, I'm not going to knock it. I was thinking Li skin, but <laughs> Li skin sounds like we skinned her. Like we, <laughs> we could cut her skin off. Ah, that's a creepy sound. Since I like this ca character, I'd like to not kill her. Yeah, I'm fond of her. She's a good character. She's a little weird, but that's okay. So you said Chang. Yeah, Chang beige. I, well, should we use beige? Yeah, no, it's beige. Yeah, because, I mean, Chang Flesh also sounds like we skinned her. Yeah, yeah. No matter what we do, we're going to... Michael. Michael Lee. <laughs> Actually, I do like that one more. Thanks, Donald. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm okay with Michael Lee. Let's call it that. Except that it'd be L-I, because her name is... Uh, or her name spelled in the Chinese spelling. So if you're using the Chinese character, L-I, Lee. So, Lee. so this is uh, Michael I? Yeah, right, Mike, Michael I. <laughs> Michael I? Michael E, Michael I. So I have both on there. That works. Do you have re reference? Um, like Michael E. Michael E. Um, so, like yeah. A song about it. Yeah. Um, and, uh, I think I actually may make that <laughs> again. I do like the color. I like I how it came out. Color. It's, it's a beautiful color. You did a very good job. I mean, it's like, um, and I've got to have to, I might commission you for yet another skin tone because we've got a, a character who's got darker skin than both of the mains. Ah. More. Like how like, dark are we talking? Like, like Middle Eastern dark, sort of more of a Middle Eastern olive. Uh, like that, okay. olive, not Greece, but like if you head into Turkey or into uh, Iran or Iraq, you know, that, that, that darker, but not really dark, but just darker. Basically, if I throw my husband out in the sun. Right. Exactly. Yeah. That is exactly it. My, my husband is Italian, yes, but he's also Armenian. Right. So Armenia, that, that kind of that area right through there where you yeah. have sort of Kazakhstan, the RLC, that whole area right through there has a specific, um, like a skin tone that's very rich. It's a very yeah. rich tone and I love it, but it's olive. It's more yeah. olive based. Down to a good point. Um, there are some Polynesian cultures that do actually have that skin tone that you're talking it's, about. It's, yeah, Polynesian. Yeah. I feel like the Polynesians though are more of a yellow base. And the 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 Middle Easterns have more of an olive base. And the only reason I say that is because in my head, we've got my three main characters. One of them is Asian, so has the yellowish color. One of them is Caucasian, so has the reddish color. And then the third one has that Middle Eastern, so has more of a greenish to tone. So that when the three of them are sitting together, you can see a definite change, but more of like a three tone. Where you've got yellow, red, mm -hmm. and green sort of kind yeah. of green there. So not yeah. like, you know, not like Orion green or anything like that, but. <laughs> you just want to like a subtle, 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 subtle. Right. Green. Yeah, and you're right, Donald. It depends and, and, on where yeah. in Asia you're moving, and whether you're moving out into the ocean, into the Polynesian islands, or into that, um, like out deep into the water, you know, where you've got the the, the island chains. Um, one of my really close friends is Polynesian, and I love his skin tone. He's got this beautiful skin tone, you know, and it's that same kind of thing. But he's darker than I'm seeing in my head. Um, 
So that's kind of a, you hear us referencing him a lot in Geek Tank, Alex, who's, but he's also got that very rich, rich skin tone. So, yeah, yeah. I, it, I, I love skin tones. I love like different, you know, where different people are from. Um, it's very important that we had a specific skin tone for Chang because she, the, the story is that the people that she came from left China and started their own, their own um, dome and their, which they specifically try to keep only Chinese. So she's going to have the most pure skin tone. The other guys can be kind of mixed a little and kind of, you know, or whatever, because the rest of the human culture is then mixed up over the 500 years. Right. And um, Don, uh, Don, I I actually kind of agree. Burma, Siam, Mountain Tribes do yeah. carry what Guy is saying. Yeah, we're getting close. Um, yeah, that that's 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 a little bit. Um, but also at the same time, if the character is Middle Eastern, you do want to reference more of a Middle Eastern uh, point of reference. Uh, I'm not saying that it's you know we don't share different parts like our skin tone is very irrevel uh like not relevant sorry no i'm like trying to figure out where you headed where are you headed on this basically one? for me skin tone is basically per person right it, it's not because even like like someone like someone told me at one point in my life like oh your skin is just like your mom's and i'm like no it's not yeah it's I, mine like my dad's skin is a much more yellowish tone than mine, and my mom's was more reddish, which yeah. is interesting because my dad's not, he has no specific pull towards any tones that would make him yellow. Yeah. But when I try to draw him or paint him, I end up pulling a lot more yellow tones than when I try to draw my mom or paint my mom. I end up with a lot more you know, richer rose tones. Um, but I also noticed that since my mom passed away, I have to use photo reference for her because there's nothing I can do. She's not around anymore. Um, and it depends on the age of the photo. Yeah. The, the, the further I go back into the fifties or the sixties, the more my mom turns yellower, <laughs> you know, cause the age of the photo changes the skin yeah. tone. So that's, yeah. That's rough. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I'm doing what we're doing here is because we're going to pin it down and then we're not going to change. <laughs> and then that way my eyes can do weird things or I can be working in sunlight or I can be working in a dark room and her skin tones won't change or alter depending on what page I'm working on, which right. is one of my biggest concerns is, you know, I, I can look at a color and say, Mm, I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to add more red. <laughs> oh, um, honestly, now. my my mom is like super, super, like definitely she has pink in her skin. Um, my dad is very neutral. Yeah. He has a, a like almost like a gray undertone at times with his skin. So like it's for me, like, Aren't we I don't know. Like my skin doesn't look like my parents. Like I just, I'm like me, right. but I'll agree with Don. It's regional, uh, not regional all the time. No. And, and of course that all depends on where your DNA comes from. I mean, that's really what it boils down to. Um, oh yeah. That's, that's yeah, Donald, absolutely right. The, the pictures were processed differently. And that's actually what I mean is like every time I see a photograph, I, I actually have been scanning the photographs in and trying to color correct them all because, um, Oh, Luna came in. Oh, and hey, Luna. It's different paper oh. films. Absolutely. So uh, just for Luna, because I don't know if she saw this, this is the, this is the actual color, the way that it came out on a different camera. Wait, I'm going to actually bring up the, uh, the piece too, so that we can look at that in, in its, comparison if you'll give me a second i was in the wrong folder so we'll bring that up and you can look at so this is this is the character right and I'll, i'm going to turn off my microphone for a second so you can highlight both of them but i can't talk yeah 
So the finished is going to be the 30 minute mark right here. Like this row right here. That's, uh, this is the 20 and this is the 10. And I think we're good with that. Totally works. I mean, it's like he, he hit spot on with her. Yeah, even Warner and Disney had to recolor films after time. And that's true. They did. I mean, yeah. and you're and you're thinking even with that, that's a specific paint and a specific tone. And even they had to mess with it. Well, and, and here's the fun part. Disney actually has like every tone, every pigment, every single thing that they ever made as far as paint for paint cells they have them written down and they have them in storage. It's in the Disney archives and I've seen footage of these. I want to be in that room. Right. I, I sick. love like, like they literally showed like, um, I was watching one of those retro films of like behind the scenes at Disney. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, um, I think it was the something, the shy dragon or something like that. It's on Disney plus. Um, it presents like a movie, but it's actually supposed to be like a short that was made for color TV. Okay. It starts in black and white and then goes into technicolor at a certain point. And once it goes into technicolor, then they go into like the room with all the paint and you actually see them making the paint. You see them like, storing it, bottling it, putting it in little things so that people can use it. It is like phenomenal. And then they have this new series where they, you go behind the scenes at the Disney archives and you see all the paint. Right. Right. And they still have paint. That's still good to use for like from, from Bambi, from right. Cinderella, from Snow White. That's a long time ago. Yeah, like so, like somebody whatever they did, ahead. they did right. <laughs> yeah, somebody was totally thinking ahead. Yeah, I mean that's that's amazing. Yeah, so like, um, uh, I mean, I don't know. I've never seen behind the scenes at Warner, but Warner usually always picked up the cartoons through a separate. Like back in the day, they used to have a production company specifically for cartoons. Right. I don't know if they saved as much as as Disney did. Hmm. So you never know. I mean, Disney was Disney is a lot more fastidious about saving everything and, and texture or in a, a uh, documenting everything. Yeah, and I'm going to agree with Don. Felt yes, like the Don. other studios tried, um, right? I think you're yeah. right, and I think could you imagine all of us just like. We'd be like kids in candy shop. It'd well, the thing is, is they have a behind the scenes tour in in Orlando, Florida, Disney World, of how the food is made. Yeah. At Disney, and I don't know if a lot of people know this, but Disney World they have like cucumbers that are shaped in the form of Mickey's head. Right. This and, is like the Japanese that made square melons. Yeah, they have a mold that it goes in, and uh, like part of the tour, they give you they give you um, fro like freeze fro flat like what is it? Bill, help me out here. What are the ladybugs? What did they do to the ladybugs? The living, uh, living land. Yes, the tour that you've made me go on twice. Oh, they make you release ladybugs to kill all the aphids. Yeah, so they give you aphids. Um, yeah, yeah. Sorry, Luna. I I do still like Disney. I don't like their employee tactics, unfortunately. Yeah, sad employment tactics for them are not the greatest. And I do know that they just let go a bunch of people too. Yeah, well, and um, and their animation department's evolving. And so, I mean, if you want to catch the way uh, art was done back in the day, which I might do. Uh, a show sometime on painting cells because that's actually something I did in college. Um, I, I did that as well. So, I mean, it's like we could do a show on painting cells, but we I are not good at it. It's time for us to go to lunch. Oh, oh, it is. <laughs> it's time to put our Korean friend to bed because it's three now. So. Oh, I'm sorry. It's all good. Hey, 
th- th- they like to join us and it's, it's awesome. And so I'm totally on board with I'm it. I'm happy that they came. Yeah, me too. Me too. Do me a favor though. I'm going to roll the end credits. Just stick around. Cause I want to talk to you for just a second after yeah. the end credits. So yeah. uh, we'll, we'll, we'll finish broadcasting and I'll chat with you for a minute after that, after I find my mouse, where did my mouse go? I'm going okay, to the guys. principal's office. Thank you. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to the principal's office. Thanks for joining me, guys. As a side note, I will not be having a show Monday because I'm going to be helping my kid do school. He's having some problems with school. So I'm I'm going to skip Monday. But Tuesday, we're going to have Shauna here. And she and I are going to talk about animation. She's doing the animation. Um, uh, of course. Uh, the, the thing for animation is for October. And she has done some phenomenal pieces. So we're going to have Shauna here on Tuesday, but there will be no show on Monday. So I'll see you all on Tuesday. Have a great weekend and keep your eyes on the stars. Bye-bye. Bye.